Arthur and the Knights. And trying to answer to that question, Miguel Martin, founder of Immersing Club Spain. Miguel, the floor is yours. Hakan Eldru, General Manager, Director General of Financial Sector Relations and Exchange Turkey. David, assign the spot. Keep it visible. Okay. Alevin Berisha, President and the co-founder of Kosovo Business Angels Network Kosovo. And last but not least, Duba Karekli, Managing Director of Leeds Angel Saudi Arabia. Ladies and gentlemen, you have your 30 minutes. Thank you. Uh, tough act to follow Professor Panos and Ivan. You guys have put so much energy into the room. We hope we can continue. Uh, with me, of course, dear friends and, and colleagues that are ecosystem architects. Now, a fancy word we always use, the word ecosystem. And uh, talking about staying away from the Silicon Valley uh, mind and, and model, we have to find the alternative. And that's why we are here. And the reason why we have to find the alternative is not that we haven't tried. Almost every country has tried an SV in their own. It's because simply the um, amount of uh, money and effort that was poured into it did not return the favor back in our new millennial entrepreneurial mindsets. We have three pillars that we're going to discuss today. Access to finance and liquidity, especially for those that are reaching growth stage in their companies. It seems that we as angels in most government funds do come at the very beginning with grants and seeds, and there's plenty of that around the world. But we don't have enough liquidity to uh, mezzanine between the uh, startup and growth stage. The second thing that we're going to be looking into is the, the father of the ecosystem, the government. Are there any legislative differences and uh, changes that we can conduct if there are any best cases that has happened here, especially in, in, in Turkey, that we can adopt in the rest of the world? And the third and most important is what is a disruptive model that we can adopt in actually enhancing the liquidity and uh, the access to smart money around the world? We spoke a lot in the conference today of ICOs and other tools that are coming up. Are we a believer or a disbeliever in such tools and what do we recommend? So I will start to uh, my left first with Miguel. And, uh, you know, you did do the intros, Ivan, but one thing that uh, Miguel is working on is setting up an angel investment network for XR, which is the next big thing. And uh, my question to you is, do you as an angel investor feel there is an, uh, a really big important role for all the ecosystem players? And if so, why? Okay, uh, well, I feel that basically the, what I know there is mainly the ecosystem in Spain. Uh, the, really, the ecosystem in Spain could be divided in, the, uh, in 17 different ecosystems because Spain is a very wide uh, decentralized country. Uh, and in general, uh, Madrid and Barcelona play the leading role, and the periphery and all the other provinces are quite uh, behind. Uh, but uh, I think that the importance of the ecosystem is to have a balance between the different players. Uh, is the, if there is uh, one of the different uh, actors in the ecosystem that is uh, the weak uh, chain, weak, uh, is the, all the other players cannot uh, have to say, interact normally uh, in the right way. So uh, talking from my experience, uh, uh, basically, I think that the, the government is uh, trying to help, uh, but uh, we like in Spain, we are a very bureaucracy state, so it's normally limit what is possible to do. From the university point of view or education point of view, I think that there is a real huge deficit of uh, edu uh, professional or specific education regarding the business angel, uh, entrepreneurial, uh, maybe there is some academic studies, but uh, the number of uh, uh, workshops or uh, courses for uh, business angel um, 
uh, professionalization is very small, only a few in Barcelona and Madrid. As far as I know, there is no almost any other spinning in the, how to say, in the, in the, in the provinces. And I'm talking with people, preparing a, a little bit the panel with different players around me, uh, was one of the points that was in common between all of them and, the, and a real need for uh, improving the professional education of both uh, startups and uh, business angels or investors. And uh, uh, for the other, uh, uh, the funding in general, I think that there is money in, in, in more coming from Europe and from public and corporates. Uh, in Spain, the big companies are very active right now in uh, producing their own entrepreneur uh, accelerator or internet, uh, corporate venturing and that kind of thing. And that we have plenty. I will. I, I have a calendar myself with all the startup contests and all the startup uh, uh, corporate uh, uh, competitions and that kind of thing. And, and there is almost one one per week in Spain. So they do have enough at the startup stage, but Sorry? what about the scale up? I think that that is more difficult. Or. Uh, in general, the ratio of uh, the many, many startups, uh, how to say, uh, don't uh, arrive to that point. Uh, from an angel point of view uh, or investor point of view, I think them start to be a little bit easier when you can show to investors that you have a, a sales record behind you and then you are, uh, you are selling because 90% of the people I talk and asking me about investing in their company, they only have a, 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 a PowerPoint or MVP or something like that. So it's not that they don't have started yet to sell. Clear. Thank you. And um, so I'm going to call you Dr. Hakan, since you have just, uh, he has uh, finished his doctorate in venture capital recently. Um, as a policymaker, where do you see this all going? Where we, we do lean hard on the government, and, and we do say, well, the government doesn't take enough time, enough effort, they're not making the policies quickly enough, but I do see a lot of change in the region, and I want to hear from you especially uh, on the terms of ease of access to funds, and especially for us angel investors. Ease of access to funds of funds. Are, uh, is the government going to support us? Could you tell us a bit more? Thank you. So you oh, sorry. Uh, as Professor said, we are toxic, toxic, toxic assets. So we shouldn't <laughs> intervene in the okay, intervene in the. <laughs> We shouldn't intervene in this sector. So, sorry. Uh, actually, I am joking. And uh, actually, in Turkey, in the last five years, we did a lot. And uh, when I look at the market, uh, I am thinking that government should know where to stop. But as a government should act as an accelerator of the public money, uh, private sector money. So we should find the ways how to attract the other people's money to the sector. So we decided first uh, the initi initiate the angel and investor uh, tax program. Uh, that was uh, a program that uh, angel investors can benefit of tax credit. If they invest in the company, entrepreneur, they get the 75% of their money from the government uh, they, if they invest in the startups. Or if they invest in the technology-based companies, they get the 100% tax credit. So it was the first step for us. And second, uh, we think that this is not enough for uh, the market, so we should initiate another. Because when we look at the Turkish market, there is a, a, a lack of money, lack of funds. So we should, as a government, we should use the angel investors as a Mid, uh, as an intermediary or government money. So we decided to, to, uh, uh, decided to initiate a program that has a uh, co-investment vehicle that in vehicles, uh, the funds, co-invest with the angel investors and Turkish government, Turkish, gov Turkish treasury will invest that fund and Turkish government will 
give his profit, his, its profit to the angel investors if the angel make a successful exit. It's a very, very promising program. It's uh, not started yet, but uh, with EAF, the Fund of Hope Fund Programs uh, Advisor, uh, is establishing a program, the co investment program. Uh, we will invest with that program to the entrepreneur, with angels. So angels can get tax credit, can get a fund, and can get a tax, uh, sorry, profit share of Turkish government. Uh, third, also we thought that it is not enough. Uh, we should make much more progress. So as a treasury, we get a legislation in the two months ago. At that legislation, legislation, Turkish government, Turkish treasury has the right to invest directly in the funds. Before this, the previous legislation was allowing us only to invest the fund of fund program. So we changed the law, and we are able to add now to direct invest the fund. So in time, in, in, in two or two or three months, months ago, a little later, we will invest with the funds, and we will maybe require us, we require the funds to invest, to co-invest with the angels. It will another source for the angels. Also, we will give up their shares to the angels also. Uh, I think uh, maybe this will not be uh, enough, but, but recently we also uh, passed the legislation. It was uh, about the crowdfunding in two, year, two months ago. I was the, uh, one of the BAM guy to prepare that uh, proposal to the government, and the government accepted that, and Turkish uh, Capital Market Board will uh, res will issue a paper uh, about, about the uh, crowdfunding in, in maybe in two months ago, in two months later. It is, uh, I think, important that government knows, should know the market, should know the uh, market players very well and connect with them and talk with them and op communicate with them, understand their needs, should understand their needs. So, but, as Professor said that we shouldn't intervene in the entrepreneurs, not much, not much. We should know where to start. So uh, we, I am thinking that we are in the correct point at now. Maybe in time, when we look at the past, we will see how was our success. Inshallah, we will be happy. Uh, happy. You are serving as a, a, a proud enabler at this stage, so um, where we have to challenge all these four uh, scenarios that you've put together because it seems that they're ahead of many of the ecosystems in your own region. And um, that's, that's going to be actually my uh, question to Alayton. You, you are in the education sector for and foremost, and, and you've, you've done amazing success stories, and you're now into the K-12, and you've established angel investment networks in Kosovo. And in, in why are we not learning from best practices and reapplying them uh, in the rest of the world? And what is Kosovo doing that is better uh, than the rest of the world when it comes to liquidity and access to smart money? Well, uh First of all, I'm really proud to be speaking to such a big crowd. This is for the first time at Webaf that I had around 30 people. <laughs> we usually pay 10 euros uh, for people to come, but this time it's for free and we saved lots of money. And with this money, we can invest in startups. <laughs> so that's the good thing. I will start with a second uh, question. Sorry to cut you off there. You should always have a lady moderator. Yeah. See, that, 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 <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thanks. <laughs> but the and I'm, yeah, before yeah, I'm also very. I mean, for me, it's also quite interesting to uh, to be able to meet. Uh, a government official who has a PhD in venture capital investing. It's, this is really innovation in itself. Um, uh, what is Kosovo doing that the world can, 
can learn. I don't think it, it's much. It's actually the other way around. I think there is so much we can learn. Uh, I have been in education for the last 15 years um, at different capacities, at different levels. And it was at one point that I thought that my students were so good at um, creating startups, but there was so little funding out there that they would not be able to grow and scale up and, and succeed. So I had an interest myself in, in investment. I already made two, uh, at that time, um, investments in ed tech. And together with some friends, we decided to create Kosovo Business Angels Network because we thought that the bottleneck was the financing part of, of, of the ecosystem building. Um, and of course, with lots of help from, from Bybars and Push as well not just help. Um, but what we've realized in the last several years is that actually we have to go back. Uh, the ecosystems in, throughout Europe and throughout the world are so different from each other. Uh, I don't think we can copy Silicon Valley. You said, yeah, I mean, uh, we don't like Silicon Valley, but is there a better alternative? Yeah, to be honest, I don't think we've seen a better alternative than Silicon Valley, but I don't think Silicon Valley works in most other places. Um, because of someone mentioned already the idea why the Silicon Valley became Silicon Valley in first place, because it was mostly because big government spending, big military contracts that made it possible for a bunch of geeks to come around Stanford and Berkeley and to kind of um, uh, innovate and create and then research and innovate again and then uh, build up those uh, companies that we have today. Um, so what we're trying to, uh, to do now is to really go back and develop the initial stage of skills building. I think for entrepreneurial minded people to succeed, we need initially people who have the skills to be successful. Um, it's one of the reasons why Valley is successful is because they are the right place, surrounded by the right people. But also, the people that are there are people with the right skills. Uh, and they know people around with the right skills. Um, in uh, most of um, emerging uh, ecosystems uh, like, like Kosovo, we still struggle to get a group of people together to be able to create a simple business model, let alone an MVP or a proof of concept. So unfortunately, uh, one of the ventures that has been the least successful in my life is Kosovo Business Angels Network. We created it with really high aspirations, with really, I would say, high dreams, but it didn't live up to mine and my colleagues' dreams. And unfortunately, because when you invest your own money, you don't want to just invest anywhere if you know that you're going to lose it. But at the same time, you don't want to invest and then do it yourself. Because if you do that, you become an entrepreneur. And you, you know, there's sometimes a, is a thin line between angel investing and, and becoming a real entrepreneur. So uh, unfortunately, uh, I think we need to go back in the emerging uh, uh, ecosystems and start from building the skills, right skill set, and the right teams Community comes third, very important. Then financing. I don't think I have seen to, um, today, uh, I, I, don't think there is a, uh, I don't think that a really good team with a great idea exists out there, but it's failing because of financing. Because we have so many ways of really raising money today, and there are so many people interested to make money out of you. So I think. It's the opposite side of it. I always thought it was the financing, the problem. But when I really went to the other side and tried to push things hard, I was so shocked that some guys that came to us with an idea, and we gave them six months' time and a little bit of money to create a 
a, a prototype um, that they could come and, and we could see how we take it further. They didn't. So that is my, my, my argument here. Thank you. Um, I've heard this argument in uh, extensive uh, global exchange uh, forums and formats where the investors say we don't have enough skilled entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs that say there aren't enough people that believe in us and give us the funds and we can't prove we're skilled unless we do that first hurdle. It's, it's, it's always the case. And I, I will second you in the skills building part, especially uh, having seen you know, how uh, when you look at the valley, of course, almost 30% of uh, engineers in most of the top 10 companies are from India. They're, they're imported. So are we importing enough skill sets into our communities from around the world? Or are, we, are we just relying on our own? And that's, that's, I think, diversity and inclusivity is a, a huge component of entrepreneurship. And with that, I'm going to go to Miguel and, and ask you, you are uh, actually building an angel investor network in a very niche area. When you say XR, I mean, not a lot of people uh, that are into uh, non-tech will understand you. So especially your investors, I'm sure you're going to be handpicking them as well. So tell us a bit more about what top three sectors you feel um, in, in Spain, in your ecosystem, that will add value? And why have you chosen XR? Uh, well, first, I, I, I just was interested in, in the XR because, uh, well, at, three years ago was virtual reality. XR is very recent acronym for trying to put together everything that is related with immersive technologies, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, 360 media, 3D simulation, drones, um, go on. So XR has a thing I invent, has been invented just to put everything together without the need to be saying different words uh, during one minute. So um, I was interested first because my background is uh, I've been working a lot uh, during many years in international uh, real estate investment. So I, uh, three years ago, the situation in Spain for real estate wasn't the, the best one. Mm -hmm. So um, I have always loved technology, so a way, a way of diversifying uh, investment, uh, the possibilities of doing business was uh, starting to invest in technology. I uh, discovered virtual reality and uh, among all the, the uh, prop tech real estate technology that can be applied, maybe it's the easiest one to promote or to sell because everybody is amazed when they, uh, how to say, can uh, walk around one property that is in the other corner of the world. So I uh, start to uh, build uh, a small portfolio of investment, identify good technologies, good people, that kind of thing. One year ago I started my uh, hybrid space with a, an academy, an accelerator, um, and a lab together. And then I think the, the most logical way of developing this local ecosystem I'm, I'm doing in Spain is to, to have the, this uh, business angel network focusing on that particular technology. Uh, the sectors or the industries where I think that can be applied, for me it's very clear that in the education is going to have a great impact. I see. You and Aladdin. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we, and, I, I, and you are going to be uh, co-working. <laughs> and um, also uh, real estate and tourism mm -hmm. for obvious reasons of uh, having the possibility to, uh, how to say, uh, experience remotely any kind of property or tourist uh, experience. And also I think health is going to be in, uh, impacted by, well, in fact, it's already being impacted by mm -hmm. uh, immersive technologies. Um, the one, maybe, I don't know if it is a very international ad or not, Samsung is uh, playing right now a, a big campaign yes. with uh, uh, VR glasses than one person and has uh, lost the leg and how the rehabilitation of uh, start working with the uh, um, um, orthopedic leg uh, can be improved using the, uh, the yes. virtual reality. Yes. 
so it's just the moment. Um, do you see any applications for Industry 4.0? Of course, yeah, you asked me just three, so, but uh, I think that <laughs> But I thought that would have been among the three. Yeah, uh, no, uh, I think uh, especially for training of, uh, for example, where I, yes. where I have my uh, home base, is, uh, we have a, a, a aeronautical mm -hmm. technology part and uh, we have a factory plant for Airbus. Mm -hmm. And I know there is a, a few projects, uh, not only for virtual reality. In fact, in my opinion, if uh, I think uh, augmented reality is going to have a, a much bigger impact sure. um, for practical use and in a daily day, daily to day basis than virtual reality. Virtual reality has been the, the first one coming, and it's very, how to say, uh, very um, impressive uh, for everybody to be in any a virtual world, but okay. augmented reality really have the possibility of solving uh, practical problems. Thank and one you. of them is training for industry 4.0. Thank you. And uh, with that, I move over to uh, Mr. Hakan. I, I want to ask you, uh, so we spoke about skill sets. One thing that government agents usually find as a, a difficulty are the people that actually execute the programs. You yourself had your PhD. But if you look at the landscape around you, do you think we have what it takes when it comes to qualified fund managers that are handpicking those startups or scale-ups who should have the access to this cash? I, I personally uh, have met several of the fund managers or entrepreneur developers, and um, I, I could you know, see two out of three were the wrong person for the job. They came from banking, their retail background, they're looking for liquid cash, they have no passion or, or vision for whatever the entrepreneurs are presenting. So how, how do you see this and what to solve this issue? Thank you. It's a really difficult question. And Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, you are totally right. Uh, when we look at the private equity and the venture capital sector, many of the fund managers are from the banking sector or financing sector. And uh, when I talk with them, what are you planning to do if we invest into the startups? Maybe they are technology companies. They are maybe uh, under, uh, biotech, biotechnology companies. And uh, they say some, uh, they, tell, they tell something, but that convinced me. Uh, I am thinking that uh, it is not easy to get the people to the, this sector and employ them. But maybe we can, uh, maybe the fund itself will find a way because as a fund, all people in the company or in the fund have the total capability. Not a people, uh, the fund shouldn't uh, depend on one people. Fund itself as a include some people, they have different areas, can be a, to, totally be a fund that can invest in the startups. So the total fund managers' capabilities I think important. So they can start at now with uh, financial professionals, but they can recruit some other guys from the universities, maybe professors, uh, maybe they need. But in time, at now, in Turkey, we have the problem that also we have in Turkey problem with the venture capital managers because when we look at the sectors, many of the fund managers are PE sectors. Uh, I mean that they are no, they know that the mid caps, are big companies, but they, they don't know anything about the startups. So maybe we can uh, use the angels because when in some countries we see that angels and the with venture capital companies, uh, venture capital funds, in co-invest. So in our co-investment co program, maybe we will facilitate this uh, lack of capabilities and we can use the angels because I attend several angel meetings and I saw that, that on the table, there are many angels, they have different backgrounds. They are, when we look at the angels networks, they have totally have a good, they can, totally give a good decision. So maybe venture capital fund use this opportunity. Uh, Co-investment may be the uh, key solution. 
So ladies and gentlemen, we just heard they're looking into co-investing with us again. So uh, we are the right people for the job and hopefully, hopefully we can pass on the skills to those that are managing the bigger funds. My last question and then I'll have two brief uh, questions from the floor uh, goes to Alayton. Uh, we had an earlier session on ICO. And you know what I think about it, but I want to so hear what you think about it. High growth exits and fast exits. Everybody seems to be into uh, you know, ease of access to cash, but they also require, in order to have that, investors that are going to see returns. So should we promote the startups that we invest in as angels for our exits on ICOs, yes or no? And why? Um. Should we, the startups that we have invested? Yes, but uh, what we are seeing with most of ICOs is that they're not, in most cases, startups that have had even angel investing. Unfortunately, what we have seen in the last year is a white paper with an idea and with some lousy names in their board of advisors. And unfortunately, for me, it is completely crazy to think that an idea, a white paper, and some lousy names in the Board of Advisors can attract $36 million in investment through an ICO. Imagine the life, just two years ago, of a startup to get $36 million. You know, you had to get seed, angel, series A, very high growth, very fast, high growth uh, with, I don't know, 50 million revenue, then you could get series B maybe or C at 36 million. And how many of them got that? Very, very few. Only those that really made it. Made it. And what we see today is if you have good PR, if you are good at speculating, you are able to raise all those funds. What I think on blockchain is that it is here to stay. A blockchain is an important technology. It could be useful, and we will continue to use it. Uh, as Professor Kitty Kitty said, I don't know if it's a disruptive or a sustainable. I don't know that yet. but. What I think is it is here to stay. But the hype that we have currently, I think it will cool down. So I don't think ICO is problematic, just as uh, I see it more of a crowdfunding um, thing at a different platform. Um, but it will get more structured. And I don't think we will see the cases that I mentioned that there were uh, tens of them. I think, uh, I don't remember, maybe uh, um, um, someone knows, but I think there were a few billion dollars in ICO uh, last year. Uh, I think it was at least... Hmm? 2.6 2. billion, if I remember correctly. I think it's yeah. more. It was more than the angel investing, yeah. especially for Europe. So it was much more. I think 12 point something, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken now. But okay. I was so shocked uh, to see that there was more... ICO money than the angel investing money uh, um, uh, last year, and I, I, I think this, this is not sustainable in that sense. It, it is not sustainable, and I fully agree. And hats off to Dr. Charles for giving us the culture of uh, crowdfunding. Uh, I personally established leadangels.com. Uh, Everybody here is more than welcome to sign on as an investor. Well, we finally have our first investment, and we do actually four and a half months to five months of due diligence that this is a real company with real legal jurisdiction before putting it on the portal. And any of your entrepreneurs are more than welcome to sign on to. And uh, I would like to take a couple of questions from the floor. Please, only two. Uh, kindly state to whom you're asking the question. Please. government organizations or government treasury 
providing funding to uh, startups, being to be tax, for example, or cost gap, or you can you can count many. Um, but the problem is, um, I've been a mentor for a while, and what I've noticed is it's become a target for startups to um, get a funding or become the first in a competition. Um, and it, it's not the target is not anymore to um, you know um, release their product or get out there and get their first million dollars. It, it's now oh I need to get that hundred and fifty thousand lira funding or um, I need to be the first in the get in the ring competition or something like that. So how can we actually avoid that becoming their main target and um, almost monitor their progress and maybe release the rest of the funding when they actually start selling or, you know, um, sort of a bit more... Clear. Clear. So um, I, I will allow, of course, uh, just if I may comment before. Uh, so I did the first Get in the Ring competition in Saudi Arabia, and we did create a lot of what we call PR nerds. So uh, people are not focused enough on sales and bootstrapping as much as they are focused on getting their PR ready. So please. Thank you. It's an excellent question. Uh, I was talking the issue. Sorry, could you raise your okay. voice or get it closer? It is a very great question. I was talking this issue with uh, my colleagues in the Turkey and the other institutions. It's a big problem. Uh, so many colleagues say that entrepreneurs just look at the government money. They don't uh, focus on their business model. Yes. So it creates problem because they think that they think that uh, if I get the money, a uh, prize money. Okay, I can get another prize money. I can get another prize money. So they are fo not focusing on the business. So I think it is my opinion, not government opinion. Uh, government should stop the funding at this some level. For example, the government shouldn't inter uh, shouldn't invest in the comp or state aids to comp entrepreneurs. For example, uh, until uh, government should give the money until 100. One hundred thousand dollars, or mm -hmm. something like that. Not so much. It, it, is, it should be enough for the entrepreneurs. So, so uh, the guy, the colleague, say that uh, when we look at the uh, ecosystem, some guys don't have any money, but they can create good excellent jobs. So it's the same. They should focus on their business. So the so, uh, solution for the, this, I think, government should stop at some point. Use smart money. Government should start. Uh, government should support the engines. Should support the networks. Should support the accelerators. Should support the phones. Uh, use the, some media, uh, media intermediaries. It is the best way because it's also cost-effective way. Uh, maybe uh, you don't know about that. Government is spending a lot of salary for that institutions to get to give that uh, aids. So uh, when we look, compare to the uh, smart money and the cost of smart money and the government money, the smart money is much more cheap. Mm, sure. and, and great answer. Alayton, uh, from the private sector view, what yeah. is your solution? Well, um, um, well, I am a libertarian. I hate governments. I... Uh, <laughs> yes. We, but, we are, we're angels. But, we don't hate anyone. Yes, well, uh, yeah, except for government, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but... But what I, I have um, two realities. I work in Kosovo and I have another company in Finland. And uh, what I've seen in Finland, uh, I've seen how government can really create um, or could impact positively an ecosystem, an entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, I think I would agree with Hakan uh, exactly on where the government involvement should be. Uh, unfortunately, although I don't believe in governments, and I always was against, and when one of the ministers came in and asked me, so what are you, what would you like us to do? And I said, nothing. And he said, yes, but I mean, how can we help? I said, you can help by doing nothing. You just stay away from us. But especially in the early it's stage, <laughs> it, in the early stage, I think government money is important. So uh, only in the early stage where you could help those startups to create the first 
prototype that is very hard, the money that is very hard to find in the private sector. Because we, we tend not to give money to ideas. I mean, I have thousands of ideas. All of you have. And if we even don't have, Google has. So we don't invest in ideas. We invest in something, yeah? in, in, in a, maybe in a prototype and a, and a team. And w uh, before that, uh, government can help with little money, 50,000 or 100,000 mostly. And I've seen this in Finland. There is TECAS, the government vehicle uh, that supports startups. And they invest everywhere, almost in every startup. Most of them fail. But what we learned today is that those that fail have actually learned quite a bit. So their next venture could be. And we, private sector, we cannot afford to educate our startups. But the government, with little money, can afford. So short answer to your question is R&Ds should be a government fund. So we had one last question right here. And then, no, zero short, questions? Short, very short, very OK, very short question. You had a question. Uh, partially, but the ecosystem, we say the ecosystem is so vast and so large. Do you have a specific way of dealing with it, if anyone can give points, like, for example, making um, somehow like a, a big committee for all the angels who can spot people who repeat themselves uh, all over and all over, and just kind of help for them, maybe, and help for investments? Okay. Um, oh dear. Okay. Hakami, uh, would you like to? Okay. All right, Alayton. Okay. Well, I. Short. Yeah. Three I, sentences. The problem is, I used to teach, and I'm not teaching anymore. So when I have this chance to speak, I will speak a lot. That's my problem. I invite you for the lecture. Yes. My university. No. So don't worry. Thank you. Very Perfect. <laughs> yes. So uh, yes, uh, there are uh, some good examples. I think. Tuba has a good example with, uh, with Saudi Arabia of bringing together all the players under one platform and coordinating. Global Entrepreneurship Network, I think, is a good example in several countries how they bring together all the players. And I think this works, bringing together all the players and, in a way, assigning roles and seeing how we could support uh, each other, uh, it is important. But it's not kind of... Uh, I don't know the, the best model in it. And in my case, I haven't been able yeah. to really create that. OK. Uh, short answer. Short, short uh, things. Uh, Guy says that we hate the government. And I will but we like you. OK, OK. I will just tell that. Uh, if, OK. <laughs> Did you read the Bad Samaritans from the Chang, the books from the uh, Korean guy? Please read it. Thank you. OK. Bad Samaritans. So to tie up, could I uh, could I just tie up? So uh, there are there are lessons learned in each ecosystem, and I think uh, Bybars Compass is great, and uh, I like to suggest a new way of looking at our ecosystems where we're creating it. I call it. Uh, the triple helix after uh, Dr. Panos, but it's called learn, live, and love. You could either start by educating the people, making sure they live the moment, so an investor should actually be in the shoes of the entrepreneur, and an entrepreneur should walk in the shoes of an investor at one point in life, and then to love. So if we could create the ecosystem with these three pillars, and we, we have to love entrepreneurs in order to choose to invest in them as well as angels. And uh, I thank you all. Thank you for making the session an impressive one. Thank you. Thank you all.